At this point, we have a very minimalist uh, gallery, but it could be considered finished. As you can see, we can launch images, we can browse the images, and all of our page elements have been styled and organized. So uh, you could go ahead and export this and run with it, but there's still a lot more options to be seen in TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. So the next thing is uh, the image info bars, and these are for when you want to put some information about each individual image on the thumbnail grid. We have two bars to work with, the alpha bar and the subordinate bar, and we enable those individually using the image info bars control group. So by default they're set to disabled, but we can turn those on and tell them to appear either at the top or bottom of each thumbnail. So for now I'm going to put the alpha bar in the top position, and I'm going to put the subordinate bar in the bottom position. So, as you can see, we have a bar above and below each thumbnail image. I'm going to go ahead and change the colors now, and I'm going to, again, use the colors that we used in our grid uh, just to keep things so they match. So, I think the text is going to be sort of an off-white color that we've been using. They're going to be green, and then the borders can stay black. Uh, the alignment for each bar can be configured individually, so you can have them center aligned or you can push them to the right. There's the alpha bar, and then the alignment for the subordinate bar can be the same or different. I'm going to push it to the right for now. And what they're displaying right now is uh, the image file name in both bars. To change the content of the image info bars, we need to come down. I'm going to close the color palette pane for a moment and go down to the image info pane. And the first two items here are image info alpha and image info subordinate. So by coming in here, we can change what is displayed. Uh, so we could maybe do the title and the date. Actually, I'm not going to do title because I don't think I have title in my metadata here. Um, I'll just put the file name. That'll work for now. So I've got the file name and the date the image was taken. And uh, usually when you make changes here, again, you need to manually reload the page for those changes to take effect. And you can see now that we have the date in the subordinate bar and the file name in the alpha bar. So let's close the image info, go back into the color palette, and start messing around. Um, the alpha bar can contain the cell number for each individual image. So you can see that uh, image 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have controls for those. If you don't want those to show, you can turn them off by disabling this checkbox, show cell numbers in alpha. But let's turn those back on for now. Those cell numbers can be aligned either to the left or to the right of the bar, and as you can see, everything shifts over to accommodate them. So I'm going to keep those on the left, and I'm going to change their color to black. Um, another thing, just while we're talking about the cell numbers, remember the uh, image ID that we had up in the gallery description? The image ID is exactly the same as your cell numbers, and so you can kind of use the grid as a cheat sheet. If you know you want to use we'll say this image, for example, um, rather than having to count to that image down here in the film strip, you can simply turn on the cell numbering, see what it is here in the alpha bar, and then adjust your image ID accordingly. So that's just a little trick. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off for now, and go back down to the image info bars control group. Um, at the bottom we have a slider for the font size, so we can increase uh, the size of the font that's in there. We can also round the corners on those bars if we'd like, so I'll go ahead and set those to 4, and maybe I'll 
set a four pixel round corner on my grid boxes as well. And then we have quite a lot of sliders, uh, which give you very minute control over the spacing. So you've got a group for the alpha bar and a group for the subordinate bar, and they're divided into groups of four sliders each. So the first group is for the alpha bar margins, uh, and that affects the space above and below the, uh, the bar as well as uh, two sliders for the padding inside. So if I wanted to bring that bar closer to the top of that box, I would decrease that to maybe one or two pixels. And then if I wanted to put more negative space inside the bar, I could do that by increasing the padding value. Now it does get a little tedious working with these sliders and waiting for the page to regenerate. So what you might even want to do is go ahead and drop your grid to a single image while we're working. That way Lightroom has fewer images to render. Um, the next set down is you have individual controls for the borders on all sides of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and take the borders down to one pixel in each case. And the reason that we have individual control for all of these borders is so that uh, you can do different things as you move these around. I'm going to go ahead and also do the same to my subordinate borders. Again, I know this is tedious, but I will make my reasoning for this clear in just a moment and then I'm going to adjust the margin above that bar. I'm going to decrease that to bring it closer to that box. So there is one possible layout where we have bars above and below. In fact, just to make them match, I need to increase the subordinate padding. Now if you wanted, what you could also do is take the subordinate bar and push it to the top of the thumbnail image. And when we do this, we start getting into a design that looks a little bit more like the Lightroom grid, where you've got two rows of information above the thumbnail image. So as you can see, it's now sitting directly on top of that, which I don't like. So I'm going to go back and change the margins again. I'm going to put a little bit of space between the, uh, the thumbnail square and that bar. Um, and if I wanted to merge those two info bars into one large bar, I can do that by uh, decreasing the margins. So I'm going to take the alpha margin bottom to zero, and then take the subordinate margin top also to zero, and that runs them together. I can then take the subordinate border top to zero and the alpha border bottom to zero, And that makes them look like one block. Um, of course, we probably want to take the round corners and take those down to zero too to get rid of this funny little spot. And so now what we have is uh, a single box with two bars of information. And now it becomes clear why I have individual controls for each of the borders on the four sides of those bars. Um, we can then adjust the padding a little more And again, just eyeball things until it looks nice to you. But uh, I think that shall suffice. So now we have a nice image info box with cell numbers and two rows of information.